talk about knife skills. I'm just gonna show you the basics, the things that I think will really make a difference in your everyday life. Let's first get started with how to set up your cutting board. If you don't place anything underneath it, you run the risk of it kind of moving back and forth as you're cutting, which can obviously be dangerous. So what I like to do is place a damp paper towel underneath my board. And now even as I'm pressing against it, it's gonna stay in place, which is gonna just make everything more secure. Let's talk about how to properly hold your knife. First of all, choosing a chef's knife, you really just want what's gonna be most comfortable in your hand. So it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be the top recommended, it just has to be comfortable. But what you don't wanna do is start all the way back here because you're not gonna have any control over your knife. You also don't wanna to be too choked up or have your index finger on the top of the blade. So you kind of want somewhere in the middle. You're gonna be a little bit choked up, so your thumb and your index finger are gonna be sitting on the blade and your hand's kind of in between the blade and the handle. Whenever you're cutting something, you don't want your hand to be on top of it like this because you run the risk of slicing your fingers. You wanna do what we call the claw. So you're gonna curl your fingertips back and so that when you're slicing and rocking the knife, it's pushing up against your knuckles and not your fingers. You also wanna make sure that your thumb is tucked back as well and not out here. Let's replay that. When we're cutting most vegetables, we're gonna use what we like to call the rocking motion. So you have your claw, you have your vegetable, and you're kind of just moving your knife like a boat rocking on the water. What you don't wanna do is be too aggressive and just go straight down on your vegetable like this. Not only is that bad for your knife and it'll dull the blade, but it also runs the risk of bruising whatever it is that you're cutting. Now that we're comfortable holding our knife, let's start with an onion. This is the root end and this is the stem end. So using the claw that we just talked about, first we're gonna slice off the stem end. I cut off the stem end to make a flat surface for myself, but I'm actually keeping the root end intact because it's gonna help keep the onion together as I slice it. Notice I waited to peel the onion until it was halved. We're gonna start by making horizontal cuts through the onion. You can do as many or as few as you want depending on how big you want your dice. All right, now we're gonna flip our onion. We're gonna slice vertically. About the same distance apart as our horizontal cuts. Now we're gonna rotate one more time and we'll have a clean dice. Now when you get down to the end here, don't try and do anything dangerous. You can just flip your onion over slice off here, and then chop through here. When it comes to dicing an onion, for most cases, it doesn't really matter how big or small your dice is as long as each piece is about the same size. A small dice is great when you don't really actually wanna be biting into an onion, but you just want the flavor that it adds. So it's great in something like a meatball where you're forming it with your hands, and you also need it to be small so it's not breaking up the nice round shape. A medium dice is probably your most all-purpose dice. It's great for like a bolognese sauce. A large dice is great if you, you know, want to be biting into that piece of onion like in a stir fry. The most important thing is whatever dice you cut, that your pieces are roughly the same size. because That's just going to make sure that they all cook evenly. Knowing how to properly cut garlic is equally as important as chopping an onion because it's the flavor base to so many of our favorite foods. To remove the skin, the easiest way is to smash your garlic clove first. You're just gonna take the flat side of the blade, put it right on top of the clove, put your palm down, and apply pressure. You'll hear it crack. The 
the first thing you wanna do is trim off that tiny little stubborn end. The easiest way to mince garlic is to start by just cutting it into some larger pieces and then just going back and forth on it with your knife. You're actually gonna put the hand that's not holding the knife on the top of the blade to help it kind of move back and forth. And as you go, you can kind of gather everything into the center again, get it off your knife, and keep mincing. So the smaller you can get it, the more it'll kind of accent your dish, but you won't actually notice that you're biting into it. And those are Knife Skills Basics. With these skills, you'll be able to cut like a pro.